six WWE wrestlers currently rotting in jail and the reasons why. Cain Velasquez One of the most shocking crimes to top our list is committed by Cain Velasquez. This MMA fighter made a name for himself in UFC matches. He caught people's attention with his swarming style of fighting technique, which gave his opponents very little room to make a move. As Velasquez's popularity grew as a professional fighter, he ended up getting a stint in the WWE from 2019 to 2020. However, the COVID-19 pandemic caused Velasquez to end his time with the WWE sooner than expected. While Velasquez flew under our radar for a couple of years, he made headlines in early 2022 with a story people couldn't ignore. Now, this sensitive story involves the assault of a minor. Velasquez is a family man who would do pretty much anything for the people that he loves. After finding out that a minor from his family tree had been assaulted, he wanted to seek revenge. We won't go into any detail about the minor or the incident as everything about them is 100% confidential. What we can tell you more about is what happened after this professional fighter found out the news. The man who assaulted this family member is named Harry Eugene Goulart, a 43-year-old man from California. He had been arrested for lewd acts but released on a personal bond. Velasquez tracked down Goulart, who was in a vehicle with his mother and stepfather at the time of the incident. Allegedly, Velasquez rammed into Goulart's vehicle with his. He then pulled out a gun to shoot Goulart through the window. However, Velasquez proved he has better aim with his fists than with a firearm because he missed Goulart and shot the stepfather instead. Luckily, Goulart's stepfather survived the attack. Many WWE and UFC fans have shown their support for Velasquez since the incident was first reported. This wrestler is currently in Santa Clara County Jail on an attempted first-degree murder charge and several other charges related to the incident. Velasquez has appeared for bail twice and has been denied both times. It has been reported that the judge denied his request for bail due to how reckless the act was. According to the judge, this crime showed that Velasquez doesn't have a regard for human lives. Unlike Velasquez, who sought revenge, stick around to see the shameless wrestler at the end of the video who actually viciously assaulted a minor. Tammy Lynn Sitch Tammy Lynn Sitch is a name that retro wrestling fans will recognize, but you may be more familiar with her wrestling name Sunny. She was part of the WWE back in the day when it went by the name WWF and was the very first WWF diva. Sunny played a big role in the WWE as a ring announcer, manager, and entertainer. She was even announced into the WWE Hall of Fame in 2011. Things were looking really good for Sunny in the wrestling world, but they weren't so great behind the scenes for this star. Sitch had a whirlwind of legal troubles over the past decade. Her first run-in with the law was in 2012 when she shocked longtime WWE fans by getting arrested five times within a four-week span. She had charges for third-degree burglary and disorderly conduct. If that wasn't enough, she also piled on three counts of violating a protective order on top of that. You think that one would learn their lesson after something like that? Not Sitch, though. In January of 2013, she once again violated the protective order. Enough was enough, and she had to spend 114 days in jail. If you thought things would get better for Sunny after time behind bars, we have some bad news to share. This former WWE diva started drinking heavily after her arrest and got arrested three separate times throughout the summer of 2015. She was initially sentenced to 90 days in jail, but served 97 days in rehab instead. Sunny even violated her parole again after rehab and got sent back to jail. That's not all for Sunny. Since then, she's had seven different run-ins with the law due to her spiraling behavior. Sunny was arrested for possession of a weapon and terrorist threats early in 2022. She allegedly threatened to kill another prison inmate with scissors, and if that's not bad enough, within only a month of this incident, when she was still waiting for her day in court, Sunny got arrested again for 11 driving offenses. This year has not been good for Tammy Lynn Sitch. Her most recent crime was on March 25, 2022, and this event was one of her most shocking arrests. Sunny made the decision to get behind the wheel drunk and was speeding in Florida. She caused a fatal car wreck that put down a 75-year-old man. She's currently in jail, where she could be sentenced to 26 years. Hard Body Harrison Hard Body Harrison's time in the wrestling spotlight was short. He was featured on WCW Power Plant and WCW Monday Nitro. While he caught people's attention with his strong physique and wild outfits, Hard Body Harrison's wrestling career never really took off. He was a popular WCW personality during the late 90s, but in 2001, when they were bought by WWF, Harrison's contract wasn't renewed. While many wrestling fans moved on and forgot about Hard Body Harrison in the ring, they were completely shocked in 2005 when his name made the headlines. Harrison had two homes in Georgia that were raided by police, and wrestling fans all over the country were disturbed by what they found. Harrison had kidnapped eight women and was keeping them imprisoned as slaves for questionable acts. While he tried to convince the public that he was letting those women live in his house to get off drugs and train as athletes, the women had a different story to tell. 
This once wrestler was running a prostitution ring on his property. These women were forced into the acts against their will. Harrison often arranged for them to perform these lewd acts and made them do household chores. Witnesses confirmed that he would manipulate the women to get what he wanted. If this story doesn't sound wild enough, the trial had everyone scratching their heads as Harrison attempted to represent himself. During the trial, horrific stories from witnesses were told and the truth about Hardbody Harrison was finally exposed. The trial lasted for two weeks as women and witnesses recounted their experiences of abuse and imprisonment. One of the most frightening stories that had everyone's hair standing up is when one of the victims alleged that Harrison threatened to throw her out of a hotel window if she didn't obey him. As a shock to nobody, except Hardbody Harrison, this wrestler was convicted of five charges – sex trafficking, sexual abuse, forced labor, conspiracy, and witness tampering. He's currently serving life in prison without parole. Allegedly, there was a ninth woman involved, but she didn't testify and all charges were dropped for crimes that were committed against her. However, it doesn't look like that will lighten up Harrison's prison sentence. After Harrison's arrest, former wrestlers spoke up about how he wasn't well-liked in the WCW. In his wrestling days, Harrison was difficult to work with, which is the main reason his career never took off. His mean attitude and loud mouth held him back in his career, and his abusive ways landed him a lifetime in prison. Buck Zumov Buck Zumov is another retro wrestler turned criminal that's made it to our list. Zumov's wrestling career was at its peak in the 1980s. He was a lightweight wrestler in the AWA who was known for carrying a boombox as part of his ring attire. While Zumov's career debuted in the early 70s, it came to an end in 2014 when he was sentenced to life in prison. People should have known something was wrong with this wrestler in 1986 when he was arrested for pedophilia. However, his career wasn't cancelled and he continued to act like a predator. In 1989, he was arrested for a second time for performing sexual acts with a minor. This time, they put him in jail for 36 months. Yet, Zumov was still allowed to return to the AWA after his release and even went on to win the AWA World Light Heavyweight title. He continued to stay in character as rock and roll Buck Zumov and entertained wrestling fans for many years, even making appearances on WWF. In the year 2000, he started his own business venture, Rock and Roll Wrestling. He organized wrestling shows in various states, and while it may have seemed like he was focused solely on wrestling, behind closed doors some very sick things were happening. The public wouldn't find out about these events until 2013. While a lot of people were shocked by what occurred, people who were familiar with Zumov's past offenses should have suspected something. While Rock and Roll Buck Zumov did have a history of sexual misconduct with young girls, people were sickened to find out who his victim was. In 2013, Zumov was arrested for 12 counts of sexual misconduct against his daughter. He was abusing her from 1999 to 2011, the earliest acts when she was only 15. On March 14, 2014, he was sentenced to 25 years in prison for four different acts of sexual misconduct. One of the most disturbing things about all of this is that witnesses claim he showed no remorse for the crimes he's committed. His lawyer tried to argue that Zumov wanted to seek rehabilitation, but nobody was buying that act. A lot of people are outraged and believe Zumov should have had a longer sentence, but it brings them peace knowing he'll be in his 80s when he's released from prison. Brian McGee. While there are a lot of shocking stories on our list today, one that always leaves us on the edge of our seats is the case of Brian McGee. In 2010, McGee was a WWE wrestler who went by the name The Future DT Porter. He appeared in two of the WWE series, but his contract didn't get renewed after 2012. A lot of wrestling fans forgot about McGee's short stint in the WWE, but they'll never forget about what he did that night to make headlines and become one of the worst criminals the WWE has ever seen. In 2013, wrestling fans were shocked to learn that McGee had brutally taken the life of 25-year-old Bianca Magahi. Magahi was his ex-girlfriend, and they were having problems. She made a call to McGee's wife, which set him off. McGee fled the apartment complex where he attacked his victim. However, the story gets weirder. This wrestler turned murderer outed himself for the crime when he stupidly decided to post photos of his victim on social media. There were many witnesses to the horrific crime. Even friends of the former wrestler tried to convince him to turn himself in after he made that post online. However, McGee wasn't going to let the police catch him easily. Once the police caught up to him, he took them on a high-speed chase. Of course, high-speed chases never end on a good note, and McGee ended up crashing his car during the chase. Luckily, there were no serious injuries, and the police could take this reckless criminal and put him behind bars where he belongs. On his day in court, the judge sentenced him to life in prison without parole. He will never see the outside of a prison yard again. Nobody knows why McGee snapped that night. Allegedly, his victim had his wife on the phone and McGee didn't say a word during the attack. This story still gives wrestling fans the chills to this day. Steve Gatorwolf Steve Gatorwolf is a former WWE wrestler whose real name is Stephen Ketcher. This wrestler had a big career in the 1980s and 1990s. However, around the early 2000s is when the public started paying more attention to his legal troubles. The downfall of Gatorwolf first started in 2001 when the world found out he'd been convicted of aggravated assault. 
He spent two years in prison. While his fans weren't surprised to find out that he had gotten into a physical altercation, they were shocked to hear about what would occur many years later. However, before Gator Wolf shocked wrestling fans and the rest of the world with his most disgusting crime, he did have another round of legal troubles. In 2008, he was arrested again for illegally promoting a fight club. Even though Gator Wolf did experience some legal troubles, fans didn't turn on him just yet. This wrestler was known for getting into brawls, and it was part of what made him popular in the ring. It wasn't until May of 2014 when the news broke and had Gator Wolf fans questioning everything. Was this pro wrestler really who he said he was? In 2014, a warrant was issued in Colorado for Stephen Ketcher. This professional fighter had sexually assaulted a friend's underage daughter. Knowing that police were on the hunt for him, Ketcher fled the state. Yet being somewhat of a celebrity, Ketcher didn't just blend into a crowd. He has a face that many long-term wrestling fans recognize. Police were keeping an eye out in Florida because he had family in Jacksonville and was well familiar with the area. In March of 2014, a photo was captured of him at Orange Park Casino in Jacksonville, which was all the evidence police needed to locate him. However, they didn't have to do much work. Not long after that photo surfaced, Ketcher turned himself in. When he was sentenced, Ketcher faced fugitive charges, seven counts of sexual abuse of a minor, and seven counts of sexual abuse of a minor during a position of trust. Retro wrestling fans were disgusted to learn that one of their childhood heroes, who faced people like Randy Savage in the ring, was actually one of the worst men to ever be signed into the WWE. Now, R. Kelly just got slapped with a 30-year prison sentence. Click on this video here to see 17 celebrities currently rotting in jail and the reasons why. See you there.